This video is going to cover creating a WordPress website. Now, I've used WordPress a couple times in the past. I run my current website off of WordPress. I've also used it for some freelance work. I know that some people were asking about doing freelance work with WordPress. So here's sort of an introduction on how to quickly set it up in a way where you don't necessarily need to go through the entire setup process. For this, we're going to be using DigitalOcean. So you're going to want to create an account on DigitalOcean because we're going to be using their one click deploy. If you're interested, I do have a referral link, which I can link down in the video description. This link's going to give you $100 over the course of two months. So it's basically two months free hosting. Afterwards, if you spend $25, then they give me a $25 credit. So it helps me out and helps you out. It'll make this uh, a cheap way to experiment and see if you like this. If you don't, you just stop using the account. You never get charged. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click the create button though. And we're going to create a droplet. When we come into here, we can actually click on this little marketplace thing. And in this marketplace, we can just search for WordPress. There's a whole bunch of other applications you can use, but for this one, we're just going to use WordPress. That's going to give you a WordPress server that you can use. You can also add database management clusters or whatever, but that's $15 a month. And we're here to work on a budget. You can come down here. The basic CPU plan is usually good enough and then go to regular SSD and click the $5 a month plan. Afterwards, you're going to come down here and I want to make sure I don't hover over this. You're going to need to add an SSH key. Now you can either select an existing key or you can click new SSH key. If you click new SSH key, they'll even give you the commands you need to run. So let's go ahead and let's run those real quick. So I'm over here inside of a uh, Linux WSL2 instance. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this SSH key gen and it's going to ask me where I want to save this file. I'm going to copy this path up to the SSH. I'm going to paste it in. So I just highlight, right click, and then I right click over here. And then I do, I don't know, I'm going to call it WordPress tutorial. It's going to ask for a passphrase, which is basically a password you have to type in every time you want to use your key. And honestly, who's got time for that? I'm just going to hit enter. I'm going to hit enter again. And it's going to give me an SSH key. Now to access this key, if I come out of here, it'll tell us that we have to do a cat for whatever the location of the file is. So again, you can just copy this or we can come over here and we can just type cat tilde slash dot SSH slash WordPress. And this is important right here. You can see that they're grabbing the public key. You don't want to grab your private key. So after you do the uh, WordPress here dot P U B, because this is the public key that you are allowed to publicly share, it doesn't make sense for you to take your private key, the one that you're not supposed to share and put it on a random website. So we're going to run that. We're going to copy it Again, highlight, right click, come over to here, paste it in, call it something like WordPress tutorial, and then you can click add your SSH key. Now in my case, I have a different key that I like to use. So I'll switch over to that one. Okay. Now that we have that set up, we're good to scroll down. None of these other options really matter. Of course you can select them if you're interested, but for the sake of this tutorial, this seems fine. I'm going to give this a couple tags. I'll call it WordPress and I'll say tutorial. I'm going to change the host name right here to WordPress tutorial. Afterwards, I'm just going to click create droplet. Now at this point, it's going to go ahead and provision this droplet for us and do some other fancy stuff. Okay. It looks like we're set up now. Now you have this IP right here. You can just click that to copy it. And then if you want to SSH in, you can just SSH in as root at, and then whatever your IP address is. Now, if you need to connect to this and I can click on this. Now, if you have a custom key you'd like to use, you can do something like this. SSH dash I, and then you can add in whatever the path to your key is. So maybe it's tilde slash dot SSH slash WordPress tutorial. And in this case, you're not doing the public key because the server has your public key. It needs your private key to be able to access it though, which makes a lot more sense than the other way around. If the server had your private key and you were trying to access it with your public key, then anyone who had your public key, which people will have it because it's public, they could access your server. So that's sort of how I remember that. So now you can go ahead and run this and there's a chance this won't work. And the reason why it won't work is, well, in this case, I don't have the key added, but the other thing that can happen is you don't have the right permissions. So if you get a permissions issue and it can't uh, access the server because your key isn't strict enough, you're going to want to run a sudo chmod command with 600 and then do ssh slash WordPress tutorial. And that's just going to set it so that uh, other people can't look at the public and private key or, you know, write to it or execute it. So 
what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to try to do the command that DigitalOcean told me, and I'm going to try to SSH root at whatever the IP address is. And there you can see we've now connected to the server. It's going to give us some questions down here, but before you press anything, we're just going to scroll up and we're going to read what the message says. So it says, welcome to Ubuntu 20.04.3. That's apparently what it spun up for us. It gives you links to some documentation. And then down here, it has the DigitalOcean one-click WordPress droplet stuff. It tells you right here to keep this droplet secure. The UFW firewall is enabled. All ports are blocked except 22 for SSH, 80 for HTTP, and 443 for HTTPS. So of course, you need this one to connect. You're going to serve it off of this, or you're going to serve it off of this, but you don't really need any other ports out of the box. There's of course a link to the starting page and a link to the new website if you wanna go visit it. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and we can just go check this out. You can probably control click this and it'll open it up in a browser. So I've control clicked it and it gives us a getting started page. I'm not gonna do anything here yet because I wanna do this through the terminal, but that's an option if you want it. Now the other thing to note, the default web root is located at slash var slash www slash html. So if you need to modify anything with your WordPress server, you're going to want to check out this address. Right here, it tells you if you're using an embedded database, the MySQL root password and MySQL user password are stored in root.digitalocean uh, password. Now it's telling you to immediately add the WordPress admin at this location. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a domain or a subdomain. Now, if you have any sort of hosting, you uh, are gonna want to add your URL here. I'm gonna cover this because I have an extra URL to use, but I need to go log into it, so give me a second. Okay, so right here I have a domain hosted on Namecheap and I've set my name servers to point to Cloudflare. Cloudflare is gonna have documentation on how to set this up. You're just gonna wanna point it there because we're gonna be hosting the stuff from Cloudflare uh, because we can all point our domains to Cloudflare, so it gives me a central place to talk about how to make this work. What I'm going to do in Cloudflare, you could realistically also just do in a service like Namecheap or GoDaddy. You just need to set up the same records, however that service tells you to. What I'm going to want to do is come down to the DNS right here, and we're going to need to set up some records. It's going to tell you right here what you need to do. You need to add one to resolve for www for the people, like all five of them in the world that still use that. And then you're going to need one for just the regular domain name. So we're going to add a record. It's going to be an A record. We're going to type at because that tells the URL to point to that address. And I'll zoom in so that we can maybe see this a bit. And then right here for the IPv4, you guessed it. We're just going to grab our IP address from here. We're going to get rid of the HTTP. We're going to get rid of the slash. And we're going to turn off the proxy status from now. And we're going to set the TTL to one minute. This just means that every one minute, you're going to have to go and grab this again. Uh, if you set it to automatic, it could be a couple hours before it refreshes and you'll keep getting sent to your old uh, like IP address, which is gonna be a pain in the butt to work with. If you do run into those issues, just try opening it in a different browser or flushing your cache or whatever. I'm now gonna save this. I'm gonna click add record. And then we're gonna switch this from an A to a C name. It's gonna be www and it's gonna point to the same location. And then I'm gonna come over here, set the TTL to one minute again. And we're good to go. You can see here, www.dnout.com points to this address. You can also do something like www.dnout.com is an alias of dnout.com. So I'll click save on that. And now if we visit www.dnout.com, it'll take us to just dnout.com, which will just take us to this IP address. Now we can come back over here to, and of course you can enable the proxies once you're done and use Cloudflare how you're supposed to. Now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna set the domain name. You can see right here, it tells you what to set the domain name to. I'm gonna say dnout.com. It's gonna tell me to add in an email address. I'm gonna say dhartdean at gmail.com. Please don't spam me. It's gonna ask me for a username. I'll just say admin. Now this is debatable. Some people don't like using admin because people and bots, when they try to attack your website, they're gonna be trying for the admin username, but this is just gonna let us use it. It's gonna ask for a password. So I went ahead, I put the password into, or I generated a password in my password manager. I'm gonna right click, paste it in. It asked me for a blog title. I'm just gonna call it deanout.com. Ask me if the information's correct. I'm gonna type yes. And then it's gonna ask me if I wanna use Let's Encrypt CertBot to configure SSL. So if you don't have an SSL certificate, you don't feel like setting up that whole chain of trust stuff, you can just type Y right here. And because we already set up the domain name to point to here, we're good to go. It's gonna ask for an email address again. We can just type in the same thing we typed previously. We'll hit enter. It's gonna ask us to agree to a terms of service. We never read those. It's gonna ask us if we're cool with sharing our information. We're gonna hit no because we're in the middle of a tutorial. And then it's gonna ask which names we'd like to activate HTTPS for. 
we can leave it blank and just hit enter to choose both of them or we can type one or two to select a specific one i'm just going to hit enter and now it's going to go ahead and it's going to try to do all of the challenges to make sure that this is actually a website that i actually set up and that i'm not just trying to do this to some random dude's website right here please choose whether or not to redirect http traffic to https removing http access i'm going to type two the reason why is there's really no point in letting people use HTTP if they can just use HTTPS unless they're like in Russia and they're using HTTPZ or something that lets the government spy on them. So we're just going to hit two and hit enter. At this point, it's just going to do some cleanup. A whole bunch of stuff's going to spin up on the screen and it's going to install the packages that it needs. Okay, it now tells us we can access our WordPress website in our browser. One last thing to note, if you want to access the database, type MySQL, and you can exit out of this by just typing exit. And of course, if you need any MySQL stuff, you can just go ahead and search that up if you need to. Now I'm going to come over here, and instead of going to this website, I'm going to try to go to dnout.com. I'm going to hit enter. Right away, first thing to notice, I'm going to zoom in a bit. Of course, we have a website that's neat, but right here we have this little lock symbol, which tells us that the connection is secure. We can click on this to view our first post. It has pretty much nothing going on. It just has like a basic comment structure, form, whatever. So how do we log in? Well, we can come to the URL and type wp-admin. After you input the same credentials you had earlier, you can then go ahead and click log in. At this point, you're logged into your WordPress website. One quick thing that I just noticed I missed while editing. After you get into your WordPress website, you're gonna to wanna to come down to settings in general because your WordPress address URL here, you wanna change this to be HTTPS if you set up the SSL certificate, and then you can just go ahead and click save. It might log you out after you do that, you just log back in and you'll be in the HTTPS setup. Now, of course, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes into running a WordPress website. Like you can see here, a whole bunch of IP addresses are getting blocked by WordFence. I have the Yoast SEO plugin installed to make sure I show up in search. I have the Google Analytics site kit up here to manage my monetization, my search appearance, the speed of my website, etc. So if you're interested in any of those topics, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to create tutorials on those topics as they come up. If you're interested in programming tutorials, consider subscribing. I have a whole host of content covering Rails, React, Vue, etc., with plenty more on the way. But for now, that's gonna do it for me. I will see you in the next video and thank you so much for watching.